Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today I want to talk about madness uh, selections again, difficulty in general. Um, I get a lot of questions about this, and there's especially a lot of questions like, what's the easiest, what's the hardest combinations? Should I go up in, in the base difficulty or the corruptors? When and why? Uh, and so let's, uh, let's get right into it. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments, and I will respond. And yeah, so you start with you know zero madness, no corruptors. This game is. Um, training wheels also it's you have to grind out your perks uh the game you you your characters are not very strong so as they get stronger you'll be able to handle harder harder like the monsters will just fall over easy peasy so once you get a decent amount of perks madness zero um they should fall over pretty simple uh the it's designed to not stress your resources on on healing on damage on stuff like that and the, so this base slider here it's got a lot of words and it does a lot of things, but for the most part, in general, just go up this scale if you feel like you have too many resources or the monsters are too easy to kill. Because this will, these scale both of these fairly, fairly linearly. Of you get less and less resources as you go up the tree. Uh, man, my decks are too easy to craft. I don't feel challenged in my deck building. Then go up on a base difficulty. Oh man, this like. These monsters just fall over in one spell. Not everyone has a turn because in multiplayer that happens a lot, where one person does all the damage and the like. The turn order matters. Where man, the slowest character doesn't get to play the game because the monster is falling over. Increase your base madness then, because the biggest thing here is monster health goes up very drastically, and your um, your shards, the, your starting golden shards, goes down very drastically as well. So I'd say um, zero to six is very straightforward seven and eight are very drastic on starting because you see we're going down 100 golden shards per so base what is it three 800 100 100 like we're only going down 100 at a time but they're going from six to seven and seven to eight you're losing a lot of gold here and the health on the monsters is scaling up twice as fast too because you look monster health is going up by five percent and then here they're going up by ten percent a piece so i would say base like if you're going up the madness Consider heavily going from six to seven, like twice as much. Consider like it's two steps instead. Like this is honestly, this is madness eight. This is madness ten. These these are these are these steps are much bigger than these steps. If that makes any sense. Um, so on the base scale again, if you're finding man, I can just cycle through my deck. I, I don't like that I have this cheesy combo. Well then, madness two or higher is for you because that's when the exhaust mechanic comes in. You can't cycle through your deck infinitely. Uh, if you're like, man, I hate that I uh, I don't like this chest system. I don't like relying on these chest rewards that I get after a run, or these are too easy, or they're too hard, or something like that. Madness 3 is for you. Uh, Madness 2 to Madness 3, you actually get a lot more gold on Madness 3 than you do on Madness 1 or 2. Uh, just because the chest reward system is gone, uh, the, the 0, 1, and 2 rely on those chest rewards to get um, a lot of shards and golds for your starting decks. So 3 is actually one of the best places to have the most resources in your starting deck and to have the most powerful deck building in the starting town. And then you can just scale after that. These like, you're not gonna feel like, yes, the hit point, the max, these are tied together. The starting resources and the monster HP are tied together. But basically just scale from three to six, just do it based on what starting gold you want. Yes, there's some issues with deadly injuries and starting energy and stuff like that. But for the most part, just kind of rely on this this starting gold uh, on how you feel comfort-wise there because you have other options over here in Corruptors, and let's get to those now. Corruptors, Impending Doom. Uh, if you're running into Impending Doom, don't don't click Impending Doom. Like, if your fights are going 8+, plus, you, sh you have other problems, and it, Doom will just kill you. Otherwise, it's just a free one. It's, it's not going to affect anything. Decadence. Uh, so the thing with Decadence is this really just nerfs direct healing the most and then healing in general uh so if you're finding that the monsters like you want to make monsters harder or you want to make fights harder but you don't want the monsters to have more hit points decadence is a good option to be like okay now there's kind of a war of attrition it's a lot harder to go longer into the fights because i can't keep the team up uh, if you build around it you're not really going to notice it so don't be afraid to just not use it if you find that it's nerfing a, a direct healing build that you're playing. If you're like, man, I just don't, I'm not having fun. Like with all these corruptors, if you're not having fun with it on, turn it off. It's not like, it, all it's doing is increasing your score. Like, and unless, unless you're going for score, 
you have to be on max difficulty for score to matter, really, like the current system. There's no there's no scoreboards for each difficulty. There's only scoreboards overall, so max difficulty is the only time score matters. Otherwise, these aren't doing anything other than as advertised. So if decadence is uh, affecting your run, just don't take it. But this will only affect direct healing, and like I said, if you want the fights to feel more of a, like, man, these monsters aren't hitting me hard enough, but you don't want to increase their their strength on this 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 scale or in other corruptors, go ahead and do decadence. Restricted power. Um, I have plenty many a game where restricted power doesn't hurt me, and sometimes it even helps me. Uh, restricted power turns off a lot of decks, though. Uh, so... Eh. I, I don't recommend restricted power uh, unless for some reason you need to unlock a card back or such like that. The game just gets... Or if someone in your group is just being way too silly. So if you find... So this is kind of like this whole exhaust mechanic. If you find that certain decks are too easy, then go ahead and turn on restricted power and that may cut off some of those decks' power. Like the, I have a thousand poison on the monster. Okay, if that's the kind of thing and it's not having fun for you, turn restricted power on. Uh, but for the most part, this one cuts out most of the possible decks. Like, a lot of cards go down in value with restricted power on, or a lot of builds do. So, uh, I would say turn it on if you're like, man, these decks are too cheesy. This restricted power turns off cheesy decks just like Exhaust did for in the infinite cycles. Uh, resistant monsters. You will notice a big increase in uh, monster survival. Like, if, man, these monsters are falling over too easy. Uh, again, that whole... Not everyone's having a chance to do their damage to their full potential. Turn on resistant monsters. I will say that it is a bigger hit to physical damage than the other two damage types, just because of the way resistances are balanced at the moment. Uh, so turn this on if you want the monsters harder, but beware. Physical damage is is very, very gimped by resistant monsters on. Poverty. If uh, you're like, man, items make this game too easy. Man, crafting cards in town makes this game too easy, like in Act 2 and 3. This doesn't affect Act 1, starting town much, but Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, you'll find you have a lot less gold and shards to spend on making your decks perfect and pristine. So if you don't like your decks being as powerful as they are in the late game, turn on Poverty. Uh, Overcharge Monsters. This one gets kind of crazy. This one is one of the ones that's kind of imbalanced uh, the most in what it affects and what it doesn't. Some fights, it, you won't notice a thing. Other fights, it's a really big deal. Uh, when the AoE silence hits your team, instead of silence for one round, it silence for two rounds. So Overcharged Monsters is the swingiest of these, I would say, even more so than Despair, for the fact that uh, if you don't have an answer to something, you really won't have an answer for it. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it other than that. Just think of every buff or debuff on yourself, and if there's one that you hate, and you're like, man, I'm so glad this just only lasts one turn, yeah, Overcharged Monsters has two turns. So, just because of the way this, like, doubles the effects of so many things that are balanced around one charge. Uh, like I said, some fights, no no effect at all. Other fights, the biggest deal in the world. Even if it's just plus one speed or fast or slow, that's, that's a big deal. But it's even greater effect on the silences, the paralyze. Man, if you go for... You can't go for, uh, <clears throat> the, for the Frozen Corruptor anymore because instead of... Then paralyze instead of half your turns being taken from you, like if all the monsters stayed alive and each one of them paralyzed one of your teammates, you'd skip a whole turn, right? With overcharged monsters on, you lose the game. You can you no longer take turns because every two turns they put a paralyze on you for two turns. So overcharged monsters, the swingiest, most imbalanced one of them all, but also can have zero effect in some of the fights. So uh, be very weary, leery. Wary and leery. So, anyway, be, be very cautious about enabling this one. This will definitely increase the difficulty of very certain fights, and you'll hate certain elites a lot more because of overcharged monsters. Uh, random combats. Um, I play with this one so much, it's so hard for me to, uh, to, <laughs> to, exp to explain the difference on it. Uh, I like that it adds champions. Champions is where a lot of the character of this game exists. Uh, getting to know the champion's names, knowing which ones you hate and like. Now that you can preview them on the map, random combat is super fun because it's very like, you look on the map, you look at your route, you're like, oh, I want to go this way. And then you check all the routes and you're like, uh-oh, this one has Lana or uh-oh, this one has Colin or, or, you know, Steven or <laughs> you get to know the names and the ones you hate the most. And everyone has their certain ones they hate more than others. 
And so I think random combats of all of these, this is the best one to turn on for a game experience. Like this one, it, it makes the game a little harder, but it makes it way fun, more fun. Like this, of all of these, this is the only one that increases the fun level for me. Now, I'm Despair. I like Despair. But that's just because I like powerful cards too. Despair is kind of the same line, except for instead of adding champions, it's now all the monsters are more powerful and they feel more like characters on the scale of how strong their cards are. Uh, Despair is a big deal for Act 4 mainly because Act 4 monsters benefit the most from it right now. So if you're having trouble with Act 4, make sure you have Despair off. Uh, if you don't like how overpowered some of their cards are, like their stockade versus our stockade, or their entrench versus our entrench, Despair just makes that a bigger difference. So this one, this adds more character, but more in a more extreme way than random combats. Like random combats gave the monsters personalities. Despair just makes them dicks, pricks mean people i don't know <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> it gives you incentive uh uh i have a 101 domination score here something like it's the need to annihilate like despair you just feel so much weaker than them at some times and it makes it more of a struggle and an obstacle to go overcome and beat them so this is definitely hard mode enabled for despair uh i would say of all the corruptors i think the most enjoyable way to play is random combats on and whatever your flavor of starting gold is. I would say for me, uh, six in random monsters is is fairly easy, but supply exchange is gone, so I can't sell I can't sell supplies, so I can't like, oh I really want this card, let me buy it. Uh, I can't cheese cards in like that. I I can still I can still buy rare cards in the starting town. I have lots of economy to begin with. Monsters are fairly rough, and this, this allows me to play any build I want, uh, so I'm not like, probably maybe resistant monsters. If, if I'm not going a physical build, I'll throw in resistant monsters, but like I said, re resistant monsters kind of really handicaps the physical builds. Restricted power turns off some builds, decadence nerfs or handicaps the healing builds. Like, all of these, uh, if I were to play, I think this would be a really good way to play without... Like, this is a sandbox mode for me, is six plus three, and these are the three, like, monsters are stronger, but I'm not weaker. Because these bottom three, all this does is just buff the monsters. These these top five, they make my game different. Uh, I probably, sorry, I would keep Impending Doom. I don't, I don't care about Impending Doom. Um, but these ones all just hurt specific builds and gameplay in general. So, yes, there it is. Sandbox mode for me is 6 plus 4, and those are the ones I turn on because I like monsters being buff, but I also like me being buff and having options and player choice on deck building and stuff like that. Poverty turns off my deck building choices and act uh, later acts. Restrictive power turns off my deck building for certain builds because certain builds are just not uh, playable and with restrictive power on. Uh, decadence just nerfs healing. I, I don't feel it because I normally don't rely on that type of healing, but... The reason I don't rely on that healing is because I play with Decadence on all the time, so I've just kind of gotten used to not being able to do it. Uh, it it just cuts out some builds. Resistant monsters, I actually I, I enjoy that a lot, but that's because I don't play physical characters. But I don't play physical characters because I play with resistant monsters. You know what I mean? Like so, I, it just gets to the point that I play certain builds because these four corruptors turn off certain builds. So I'm stuck playing the, the other ones. So yeah. Anyway, I play most of my games at M16. If I'm playing to screw around, I'll do 6 plus 4. And uh, like I said, don't feel bad about just sliding the scale up and down based on trying to adjust the monster health and your starting resources. And then don't feel pressure to put any of these in and don't feel pressure to put them in in any order. Uh, but if you're going to put one in, start with random combats. That's the most enjoyable one, most game... Uh, changing and exciting way to add flavor to the game. Anyway, I will keep babbling if people let me, so I will stop talking, and if you have questions, let me know, and I will answer them. Uh, catch you later. Peace.